Another update on the garden. Um, this is the Blue Lake Bush Beans. They're getting a little bit of sun scald, as you can see, so I put uh, some screen around them to give them shade. This is the pepper plant from Lidl. It's starting to have little, little blossoms on it. So that's exciting. This one is also from Lidl. Also has little blossoms on it. Um, that one just fell off, so it looks like that one didn't get pollinated, unfortunately. This, I know I said before it's a banana pepper, but I should have read my own label. It's actually the Black Beauty Bell Pepper, which is the one that I thought died, but my banana pepper is the one that died. So, surprises to everyone. Um, they're doing pretty good. They're starting to finally take off, but it's, it's like almost the end of July. So I think next year I'm going to start them earlier inside and wait until they're bigger before I put them out. Because I think the uh, colder nights that we had at the beginning of summer and of spring were not conducive to these peppers growing. Um, over here, well, we're actually going to come over here because the AC kicked on and it's noisy over there. So over here... In this pot here, we've got uh, some sweet bush baby watermelons. I'm going to have to go in there and pull one of those out because that pot really only has room for one. Um, I'll maybe find another pot to plant the other one in and see what we can get out of it. I'd walk over there, but spider web. And... I don't know how well you can see her on this, but right underneath that leaf, there's the spider. So she's an orb weaver. She's got a yellow back with some spikes on it. I don't know what they're called, but I know that she's an orb weaver. I could probably look her up. Um, but she has taken residence in our pickling cucumber here, which has some cucumbers growing on it. We harvested a bunch of cucumbers yesterday, um, so there's not as many on it as there should be. She wasn't quite as prolifically spread out as she was, as she is today. Um, the spider, I mean. Still plenty of bees buzzing around the cucumbers, so that's great. My green onions are doing amazing. Um, I harvested off of them a while ago and they're already like got gigantic stalks again, so that's good. Uh, we harvested the berry wine black tomato that was on this plant right here. It was delicious. It was huge. It made like super yummy tomato sandwiches. Um, I am definitely going to plant these again next year. Ugh, I've actually planted a clone of this plant over there and I'll show it to you in a minute um, because I want more of the the giant dark tomatoes because that, that was really good. Um, I do have some there we go some more of them growing uh, but as you can see this plant is much taller than its support so I'm gonna have to get taller supports I'll do that this week uh, the Japanese black trifle is not quite as tall but it is starting to become covered in fruit like it already had some pretty good fruit on it down below here in this bag um, that I had to had to cover up with the bag so that squirrels wouldn't eat it. There's some over here that are not in the bag. Come on, focus. Focus. There you go. Uh, so I'll have to get another bag and put those on because the squirrels are pulling my green and semi-ripe tomatoes off, which isn't fun. It's just more leftover screen. We had a huge roll of it 
uh, from when we repaired a sliding door in our old apartment. And it's just kind of been hanging out in our utility closet since we moved to this new apartment. Uh, the asparagus is bushy as ever. I decided I'm probably not going to harvest from it. I was thinking about it, but it's the first year. I want to go ahead and let it get super established. Um, but there's a whole bunch of them in there. And I can see ugh, that they're starting... Ooh, ah, spider web. Sorry, spider. That they are starting to thicken their stalks up. So these are the newer stalks. And these small ones back here are the older stalks. So I'm going to let it continue to do that. More asparagus. Um, this tomato here is a black cherry tomato. I've got a couple of them. That one back there is a mystery tomato. So we bought a tomato from Lidl, and when we cut it open, it had started to sprout. So rather than eat it, uh, we actually just kind of planted it. And that's what grew. It produces, so far, some pretty uniform fruit. Um, it's about, it usually has six clusters, or rather six tomatoes in a cluster. Uh, so I'm quite liking that, and I will probably save seeds from it at some point this year so that I can grow it again next year, because I don't know what the variety is, so I can't just go buy the variety since it came from the grocery store as a food item. Uh, this is more black cherry tomato. This one got very tall and uh, yeah, let's see. focus, focus. There we go. Got very tall and kind of snapped a little bit there. Um, so I'm going to get it a taller uh, support as well. I'll probably just buy a whole bunch of them because all of these tomatoes are indeterminate as far as we are aware. So they're going to continue to just grow. This is the uh, first one, the first cherry tomato that's gotten so heavy that it's snapped itself. So, But it's also the tallest one. Um, here's that little Brandywine Black clone that I got. I just took it off of the main plant. Uh, it was a little additional stem that it was growing in, like, the little crook of the, the tomato plant, you know, when you've got a branch coming off and then the main stem and then something grows in the middle part. That's, that's where that came from. Um, here, this is what I mean by crook this, that spot. This is also a black cherry tomato. It has way more cherry tomatoes on it. Uh, it did not grow up as straight and I let it fork out. Eh, spider web. We got a lot of spiders in the garden. Um, I let it fork out, which I think maybe next year I'll do again. Well, no, I let the other I, I let the other ones fork out as well. Um, but as you can see, the foliage on this one is a lot darker than the foliage on this one. They're not different varieties. These are from the exact same seed packet, planted at the same time, um, transplanted into these pots at the same time, same dirt. Like, everything is the same except for the pots. So these ones have plastic pots here. And this one is in a felt pot. Now, the felt pots have a tendency to dry out pretty quick, um, but they do seem to produce healthier plants as far as tomatoes go. Now, the felt pot is the only pot that the pepper died in, so I don't think I'll do peppers in felt pots again. But I think next year I'm going to do all of my tomatoes in felt pots just because of how good they're doing. Um, 
but like I said, they do dry out, so I do mulch them. Um, this is my White Wonder Cucumber. And as you can see, there's a layer of wood chip mulch in there. That's just to help retain moisture and like reduce the amount of heat going into the soil from the sun because they're in black bags. So they're just surrounded by heat all the time. Um, but I didn't want the top of the soil to dry out so easy. So that lighter colored mulch really helps with that. Uh, the cucumber plant looks pretty bare right there, but there's a nice lush vine. Here, let me straighten that out. There's a nice lush vine growing up the rail there. Um, it's got a little bit of sun scald, but it's, it's doing okay. And then there's a secondary vine that you can't see that's actually mixed in with the other pickling cucumber on the, on the trellis here. Um, so that's good. So looking at the shape of these leaves, I've got a plant out front that looks like it's got leaves like this, so maybe there's a little, a little weird cucumber growing out front. Huh. So that's the majority of the tomatoes. I really just, there's so many, there are so many tomatoes on this thing. Like, if these ripen all at once, I don't know what I'm going to do because, like, there isn't going to be enough cherry tomatoes to really can anything. But, like, it might be too many to eat before they start going bad. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh... This is the raspberry plant. It has grown very tall and is continuing to grow very tall. I've got a support for it because the wind was just blowing it over super hard. Um, this is the old original cane. So once, once winter hits, I'll probably trim that back. It's got some new growth on it, but it's doing a little bit sickly there. Uh, but as you can see down here, we've got a couple canes that are growing up and out, which is exciting. Oh, there goes my AC kicking in. I'm gonna go ahead and break the spider web here. Here's the chives. I've cooked with them twice now. Um, they add a, a less intense oniony flavor, I guess. Oop, chives. So that's good. Uh, I've got potatoes and garlic out here to see if I can get it to sprout. The garlic is starting to put out roots, so I'm going to get those planted this week. Um, the potatoes are not doing as well, which is fine because this technically isn't how you're supposed to sprout them, but... Still maybe a little bit disappointing. The purple tomatoes just went bad, so I'm gonna just throw those away. But the uh, yellow and red ones seem to be starting to develop roots. Yeah, little roots right there on the eyes, so I might plant those this week as well. This is my basil field here. <laughs> it's just a tower planter. Um, and I planted so much basil because, one, we really like to eat basil, but two, when I planted it in these lower ones here, it kept getting eaten. And we don't know what was eating it, but it was really annoying. So I figured they can't eat all of those little sprouts, whatever they are. Uh, in this empty one, I have planted some coriander, so we'll see if that sprouts. And then there's another empty one around the corner there that has sage in it. Um, it also is not sprouting. I just planted those last week, though, so that's fine. This is Greek oregano, or rather oregano. Uh, my dill, some thyme, some parsley some catnip. Only one catnip plant survived. Uh, to, to my cat's dismay here. But that's alright. And then around the corner is the red shiso. Um, the red shiso plant is a little bit weird. It tastes very meaty. 
like, it doesn't taste like it's an herb, you know? It just, it, it lends a very uh, savory flavor, the same kind of savory flavor that adding, like, pork broth to something would add, which I was a little bit weirded out by, but it's pretty good. Oh, one of my tomatoes over here is ripening. Yay! Um, yeah, no, it's pretty good. I've cooked it with chicken a couple times, and I like it, so I think I'm going to grow red shiso again next year if it dies. Like, I think technically it's a perennial, but I don't know if it'll survive the winter, and I'm not bringing the pot inside, so... Uh, so this is the grape plant. Uh, still has not produced grapes. I really need to look up. Like, I didn't think it would produce grapes because it's the first year, but I think I should look it up and see if it's supposed to be producing grapes. Because if it is and it's not, that means I'm doing something wrong, and I need to look into what I did wrong so that I can not do it wrong again. Um, we do have some pest damage here. I'm not sure what causes those, but it's only on a couple leaves, and it hasn't spread in weeks. So I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, sorry, little spider. Um, but I learned that you can put a grape leaf in your uh, jar when you are making cucumbers, and the tannins from the grape leaf actually keep your cucumbers crisp. So if you don't want to buy the little crisping powder from the store, uh, but you have grape leaves, there's an alternative. Uh, supposedly black tea leaves will also do it, but, like, I have never tried it. I've tried it with the grape leaves. It worked pretty okay. Um, it probably were, would have worked better if I'd given it a little bit more time, but I waited two weeks and I needed pickles, so that's... That's all the time it gets, is the, the time it takes for me to need pickles. Uh, this is also a Japanese black trifle. Um, it's not as dark as the one planted in the felt pots over there. But it does have a little tomato ripening. Um, the shoulders of this are supposed to be darker before it's harvested, but it's in shade cloth, so I don't know how dark it's going to get. I'm going to let it go a little bit longer before we, before we harvest it. Um, this plant, as you can see, also has the protective bag of screen around it, and that's because we had... This is actually the one that alerted us to the problem. We had two tomatoes stolen from there, and they weren't even, like starting to ripen or anything. They were just green tomatoes that a squirrel or whatever came and took. It had to have been a squirrel because the tomatoes are completely gone. Like, there's no evidence on the ground that they were there. And it was literally, I came out one morning, the tomatoes were there, everything was fine, and then I came out in the afternoon and they were gone. So it's not like there was time for the tomatoes to decompose away or anything. This is my slicing cucumber. It is much more perked up right now than it will be later in the day. It gets so hot here that even with all the watering that I do for the cucumbers, like, they just, the leaves just droop super bad. Um, we've got some dead leaves here. I might come through and clean this up a little bit. We harvested two cucumbers off this yesterday, uh, and I'll have to record, record me harvesting at some point. Um, but we've already got... A lovely cucumber growing right there. Um, I think there's another one on here. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's over there. It's like right there. Um, in this pot, because I'm not expecting these cucumbers to last through the heat of August, I've planted a... Uh, another sweet dumpling squash. It hasn't started sprouting yet, but I wanted more than two. And over here, there's a lot more room for it to grow out. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And if it turns out that the cucumber is surviving, I'll transplant the squash, but they don't really like transplanting. And we've got the blueberry bushes here. They're doing pretty good. There's a little bit of pest pressure, but 
they're not really seeming to suffer too much. This one is definitely doing better than that one. And I think it has to do with their varieties, but I'm not digging their tags out to see what the varieties are, so we'll find out later, I guess. Um, this is another pepper from Lidl. We just took mini bell peppers and planted their seeds, and this is the second year I've done it, and they grow really good. Um, they don't make the chili-shaped bell peppers, but they do make smaller kind of like pumpkin-shaped bell peppers, which is pretty cool. Like, we get them as chili-shaped ones, but they grow little pumpkin-shaped ones, which I liked. I don't like bell pepper flavor, but I like the way they look. My zinnias are getting pretty big. Um, that sweet William in the back is not getting that big. But that's all right, because the zinnias are getting big. Um, let's go back over to the beans, because I've actually planted some sunflowers in this pot as well. And it doesn't look like they are sprouting quite yet. Oh, oh, wait, I spoke too soon. That's a little sunflower sprout right there. So we've got a couple sunflowers that are going to be growing up uh, in the back of the beans here, which I'm excited about because they're the uh, autumn fire sunflowers. And my autumn fire sunflowers out front very quickly got eaten by some yellow birds. So I didn't really get to enjoy them. <laughs> so hopefully these ones uh, managed to survive long enough for me to actually like take a good picture at least. Ah, but that is the garden as it stands right now. I think I'm going to do some pretty big renovation to where some of the pots are, um, but we'll see. I'm still, I'm still planning because, like, I want to set them up so that they're in, like, cinder block squares just because they fall over so easy in the wind that I've got all these, like, strings tying them to the trellises and it's just not great for getting in there and harvesting stuff. So if I make alterations you guys will see it later. But thanks for hanging out in the garden with me. Bye!